I remember going to the hospital and my mum and dad coming in and crying. The reason for me doing it was because I just couldn't cope. I, I remember speaking to our media guy, Mitch, and I just said, listen, there's, there's something that I want to talk about. We wanted to link it in with something, and the Time to Talk campaign and the Heads Up campaign was something that we felt worked really well with it. There's no really easy way to get into this, yeah. so... <laughs> Well, I felt vulnerable because I think I've got this sort of persona as a as a captain and I'm tough on the pitch. But if my if my story can stop one person from doing it um, or someone to think twice about it, then that means more to me than anything else. Okay, uh, Mitch will explain what tomorrow is and what's going to be happening over the next two three days. For those that aren't aware, tomorrow is time to talk today, and that's in lead up to the Heads Up campaign that's happening across English football. I've been working with Gilly on this bit of content. It's some stuff that's going to be going out on our website and in the national media from around tomorrow morning. You'll see it in newspapers, then it'll be on like the BBC and things from Friday. We just thought it was very important that you guys got to see that content before it was in the national mainstream media. So whenever you're ready, Matt, we're ready to show it. I'm bubbly, do you know what I mean? I'm outgoing, I, I'm always smiling and always happy, and that's how I am now. But that wasn't how I was 11 years ago. I remember being 16 and a coach telling me that I was fat, basically. I was living away from home. I wasn't close to my family at all. And then, obviously, I was dealing with the fact that I knew deep down that I was gay and I didn't know how to handle that. So there was a range of things that I was dealing with, and to be honest, completely honest, I didn't deal with them, really. Was there a point where things got really bad? Yeah, there was, there was a point when um, I made the decision that I was going to take an overdose um, at 17. And, yes, yeah, sorry. Don't apologise at all. It's, it's a huge thing that you're talking about. <laughs> I should have spoke to my mum and dad, do you know what I mean? And I remember going to the hospital and my mum and dad coming in and crying. The reason for me doing it was because I just couldn't cope. I didn't know. I didn't know how to handle it. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm just better off not being here. How surprised do you think your teammates, friends and family will be to realise what you went through? Yeah, I think they'll be shocked. This is why I felt like I had to say it, because it's the people that you least expect it from. Even if someone's got everything going on in their life, doesn't mean they're not going through a tough time. But you have to talk. If I can get myself out and save myself, then anybody can. An incredibly powerful and, and brave interview. Footballers have um, an on-the-field persona and yeah. an off-the-field persona. Her on-the-field persona, I've seen her play many times, she's brave. She's a leader. She'll make a tackle. This is possibly the bravest thing she's ever had to do. Yeah, really, really important. Mm. And impressive. Discussion. Proud of her for doing that. Oh, mate, more than that. M more than brave. Yeah, what can you say? I mean, for someone to come out and say, I tried taking my own life, like, ten years ago, and to say, look, it's all right to pick the phone up if you're struggling. You know, people will be there for you. For her to come out and do that, it just sums up the character. You know, I love her to pieces. She's a diamond.